Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. This was a uh, spiral staircase that I had done today. Um, it's a little shaky to start out, but it goes from a straight runner to a curved runner. And I know that some of you have been asking me to explain a little bit as I go. So what I'll do is I'll narrate over top of this while I'm actually doing the work. Um, so I'm watching the video in real time with you right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm measuring on each side about five inches that uh, is four and three quarter to about five from the side of the stringer to the side of the spindle that's how I center it this is called Anderson Tough Texas carpet it's really really rigid really really stiff so you've got to really work it not all carpets are like that but here we go I'm gonna pop a couple staples in just to hold it in place while I kind of you know muck around with it a little bit Get one in the end. Now I'm not putting any staples in the beige color. I'm putting it in the brown. And there's little uh, lines between that that I'm hiding the staples in. Now I'm bending it. I'm working it around that bull nose there or around the lip of the stair. Just because... If you try to do this without bending it or pre-bending it, those staples are just going to pop out. So pre-bend a little bit, and now I'm going to put a bunch of staples in. And yeah, you can see the video's uh, shaking a little bit, I guess, um, from me putting pressure on that. The uh, camera was shaking. So here we are. we got all those staples under there. We're going to go up to the top. We're going to measure five inches from one side, five inches from the other. You know, you got to find your center. You got to know what you're doing there. It's just to keep it even all the way up the stairs. Probably grab a kicker here, I think. Yep. That's just to keep pressure on. You can see me pushing that with my leg or my thigh. Keep that on. And now I won't hook it to the pins or the smooth edge. I'll staple the sides. That seems to be the best method to hold it in place. It's what I like to do. It's kind of something I've found that works really well. Because that stuff won't hook to the, the wooden, uh, to the smoothage anyways. Those pins are great for most carpets, but not for Anderson Tough Tex. So what we got to do is we got to get it in that groove. And this stuff, because it's so abrasive, or not abrasive, but um, um, rigid, you've got to really work that. Again, we're hitting it pretty hard, so that's why you're seeing it shaking there. We got to get a nice V groove, get that staple in there probably one every inch and then uh, give it another couple of slices feel with my fingers make sure there's no staples popped out of there we're gonna measure again the thing about stairs is it never straight and carpet likes to to walk that's what I call it it'll walk it'll walk to the left it'll walk to the right and you will be off and you will notice it so it's very important to take that tape measure and measure as you go Every stair, sometimes like you saw it, I did it on the front. Um, I'll do it on the back. The reason for putting those stables in that you just saw there and it was bubbled out is because it started to walk and I had to push it back, which bubbled up the one side. But no problem, just split the pile, pop a couple stables in there. I go through lots of staples. Right, you can see, boom, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like I go through one clip of staples, usually per stair or every second stair. I think one clip holds about 50 staples. There I go measuring again. Pop a couple staples in the side. I guess we're measuring on that side. You can't really see it, but we're going to change camera angles in a minute. There we go. So we're probably going to bend that again, you know, pre-bend that, give it a little squeeze. It just helps to form it. Lots of staples. You need a really good gun. You don't want a cheap gun. This is a, a three, four hundred dollar gun. Um, it's very powerful. It's made for this. If you guys have any questions, you know, put it in the comments below. I'll let you know what the tools are and stuff that I use. Most of these things can be rented at, uh, at like a rental place. There's 
So as I do, I move my tools up every stair just because I like them close and I don't want to step on them. Now here we're coming up. The reason why I'm cutting this off here is because uh, we're at the end of, uh, I think it was a six foot run. So I want to, uh, I've got to start a new one. So we're just going to tighten this up. We're going to get it in place. We're going to measure and we're going to get it uh, positioned so we can cut it. I put a lot of pressure on that kicker. I don't kick it. I just lean into it. Get those staples in the sides. And then score that with my tucker. Because it's so uh, rigid, I'm just, you know, I got to bang it down. Get some staples back there behind the smooth edge, between the smooth edge and the riser. Get a nice V groove before I cut it. Score it. And now, nice sharp blade. I'm going to cut it from end to end. Notice how I go from one side and then I start at the other side and go in because you do not want to cut outwards. You always want to cut inwards. Now we're starting the new run. I've got a, obviously a perfect straight edge there. Um, this was a 28 inch wide runner. So I actually sewed them myself, cut them myself. So they're pretty accurately on 28 inches. So we're just going to line them up and hide the seam within the uh, first stair to this to the riser. It's the best place to hide. It. I mean, you can hide it under the nose too, which you're going to see in the next on the next stair. Cuz this is the last of the straight stairs. We're going from straight to curb, so it's a little tricky to go from straight to curb. So just bear with me, keep watching. The reason why I'm hitting that with the tucker is I'm actually hitting that down and I'm jamming it into the V. Right, because that's where we met the new one with the old one, or the new one with the previous one. So you kind of, you know, some carpets you got to really, really work down. Otherwise, it's going to be a gap, and you're going to see that seam. I want, I don't want people to see it. Now you get that in there perfectly. No one can tell. Now we'll probably pre-bend this here again a little bit, and we're going to change camera angles in a minute. Um, actually, we might be cutting this one off. I think this is where it's going to change from flat to round. I think that's what I'm reaching up to grab my knife. I think I was thinking of kind of trying to run it over, but the angle was too uh, too steep. Oh, no. I guess not. My bad. Sorry. One more straight one. I guess it walked a little bit. That's why that uh, put a couple staples over there. Okay, so this will be the last straight one. We'll probably change the angle here on the camera. There we go. So yeah, second verse, same as the first. We're gonna measure. Watch you guys see this in real time. Like, I only cut out little bits of stuff usually where I'm changing the staple or something just so you guys don't have to sit here through the whole thing. It's very good to watch. I mean, I learn everything by watching. Right? See how I've got, I'm not, I don't have any hands on my kicker. I'm just leaning into it. Right? Like I've got my hands free. Just put pressure on that thing. Staple the sides. Right? That's in. That's not going anywhere. You know, we'll get the tucker in there. We're going to groove that, but we're going to see some stuff coming up here where we're going to start to turn the stairs from straight to turn to straight to pie. And you're going to see that. Let's get our tucker. Let's groove it in there. Get that V groove nice. Pop a couple staples in there. See what I did with my kicker? I put it up top on top of the carpet so it didn't roll down on me. That can get you real upset.
Yeah, okay, so this is uh, the curved stair. So we're gonna cut through this. Leave a little bit extra because I gotta fit it. And I left this on so you guys could see this. Now this carpet's a little bit tougher than normal. Um, the backing's super stiff. It's felt back, it's got some serious glue in it. Let's get that groove down, stapled. Let's get that nice V. And now I gotta shave that underneath that nose. And the only reason I'm doing this one different is because this is where it transitions from straight to pie or straight to curved and not easy because straight is 28 inches. And when you curve it, all of a sudden that angle is going to change to, I think it goes about 28 and a half to 28 and three quarters. So we're going to show you how I uh, deal with that in a minute. I'm going to cut this down just so that I can start making the transition from straight to curved. All right, nice and clean. Get a pair of scissors on that, probably. Just because scissors not... Blades tear, scissors cut. Right? Yes, I thought I would grab some scissors. Just makes those ends nice. Tuck it in. Some staples in. I'm always stressed on these points because this is a transition you know you want to make it look good now I changed the camera angle I've cut this stair I measured it was a 22 inch stair on the angle now what I do is I start out with an inch and a half angle right I think I'm right there I'm just straight edging it flat because you want to be you know you have to have a straight straight piece now I don't I do it by eye I don't have to use a t-square I'm doing it long enough trust me in that now what I'm gonna do on the inside curve I'm going to measure out one and a half inches. Sometimes it's one and a quarter, sometimes it's one inch and three quarters. But I'm gonna cut that down on the angle. I'm gonna put the, on that, that straight edge there, I'm going up to the top and then I'm angling out. Nice sharp blade, cut that through. You guys are gonna see what this looks like. So I set this up for you guys to have a look at. Let's get it cut first, then you should get a good shot of what this looks like. Okay, do you see that piece of pie that I cut out? It's on an angle. That's going to make my turn. There's the stair, here's the first pie. Tricky stuff. Inch and a half is safe, and then if you start to see that it's not lining up, you can go an inch and three quarters, inch and a quarter. You've got to kind of do it as you go. I don't have any set way to do it. I like to kind of... You know, every staircase is different. Some stairs have a drastic turn. Some stairs you have to uh, you have to pre-cut and then pre-sew. These ones are pretty, you know, the, the turn is not too bad. So we got to get it under the first nose here. And we got to get it lined up. And this is, this is the hardest part because this is going to take, I don't know, a good 25, 30 staples every quarter of an inch. Otherwise, it's just going to pull off. This is how you can start to turn from straight to curved. I'm going to pound these staples in now. It was tough. So right now I'm just, I go about one to five inches and then I fill in that five inch gap with staples one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll kind of work down, you know, four inches, five inches and get, get it locked into the groove and then work my way back. You can see how I'm doing that. I know the spindles are in the way, but that's basically what's going on. So that boom, 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 boom. And I'll make sure that seam is invisible and that I've got enough staples and their, their staples are in well, so you cannot see them. And then it looks like it's a continuous piece of carpet. Okay, get your nose under there, look under the, under the lip and see what's going on. See that? There must be a little bit of hair there or something. Oh, I know what it was. I could feel a staple that popped out and I had to pull it out. You don't want to leave that stuff hanging out. It's sloppy work. All right, load up some staples. Here we go on our first curve. I'm gonna cut that excess off because that's just too much to deal with. 
I am probably looking for my knife right now. There it is. I am going to cut that off. I feel like I've done this job twice today because I now I am narrating it. <laughs> okay, so tough stuff. Need a good blade. Got to watch you don't pull that blade towards yourself, especially if you're just starting out. Because you will, if you slip, you will slice your hand up bad. Warning. And that's a double-sided. That's not an exacto knife. That's a knife called a Bloody Mary. It's got a blade on the top and a blade on the bottom. So I pre-cut that, pre-fab that, check the smoothness, check the pad, check my angle. You guys will see in a little bit uh, a top shot of what this looks like. I'm just giving you side shots right now. We'll probably do a couple on the side, and then I'll go to a top shot and show you on the top. Lots of staples. Instead of doing it on the side, I did it behind between the smooth edge and the riser because I wanted to get make sure my angle was going to be right because this is my first one. Get that groove as usual. And I took my time on this today. I didn't I think it took me two hours to do this flight. This carbon makes me nervous because it's very, very expensive. I think each stair is like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, just in carbon. It's very, very expensive stuff. So you never, you know, when we only buy enough to do the staircase, a little bit extra, but not much because of the price of this stuff. So I always get nervous when I do Anderson Tough Techs. Like, Don't make a mess. Don't ruin it. So now stables on the side, three to four on a pie. Here we go. I, I left this in so you guys could see. I'm going back downstairs to do my next stair because I think that I cut that at um, an inch and a half. This one I'm going to change out to an inch and three quarter because I want the angle to change a little bit because that was the first transition from straight to curved. Now, when you guys do this, you're going to figure out that angle, whether it's got to be a little bit more, a little bit less. Never go over two inch angle. You will not be able to reconnect it. It just won't happen. Inch and, inch and three quarters, bad enough. Inch and a quarter, no problem. I'm using the back side of the knife because it's a sharp blade. All right, I think we're going to do this cut, this angle cut. And I wanted you guys to see this. Like every stair, I take my time. I will go and make another cut and make sure that I know exactly what's going on. With my hand, I'm checking the pile. Pile always runs down like water. You can feel it with your hand. Once I find the pile, and I just double check. And you can see I'm pointing, I did that for you guys. That's the corner I'm gonna cut, inch and a quarter, to inch and a half, to inch and three quarters. I think this one I'm doing inch and three quarters, just because I wanna get the angle right. I'm adjusting, and adjusting's okay. Sharp blade, tough cut. There, you get a better view of this cut from the last cut. You can see that angle that I'm cutting it on. That's the whole secret, really. That's not for every staircase, but for this staircase, we can get away with it. Like I said, any staircase that requires over two inches, you're going to have to template it and pre-cut them, pre-sew them. All right, we'll move the camera angle. Here we go. Now on the next couple of ones, we'll, uh, we'll probably get a top shot for you. Same thing. Every stair is the same, right? Staple. Get it in the groove. I don't put a lot when I start a stair. Maybe five, maybe six into that riser, you don't need a lot there. Because you're kind of pressure fitting and jamming it into the old one or to the, pr the previous stair. Get that tucker in there, right?
see guys that do the same thing all the time. It just makes it easier. Get that staples in there under the nose. Can't believe that. I can't believe every time I hit that thing that's moving that tripod. My tripod is not touching the staircase. There we go. So now you can see the top angle there. You can see that stuff's tough to cut. So all you're getting is a uh, top view of this. You're going to see how I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to grab that kicker. I'm going to put some pressure on it. Right, look at it. I just put it on my top thigh and I lean into it. And I put that pressure on. Get those staples in. Never kick. You couldn't kick this stuff. It wouldn't. It wouldn't hook. It would just. You'd break your knee. And at the end, we're going to show you um, a finished video of it. It's not great. I used a gimbal on it, but we'll see. We'll have a look. I was totally impressed, but you get uh, you get an idea. There's a picture of it too. Beautiful carpet. Okay, see, I cut from one end to the middle, and then from the other end to the middle. It's just because the binding on the outside. If you cut outwards, it's going to fray. You're going to cut the stair. You have to think about what you're doing. So here we go. You guys get a view from the top. I left it in so you can see. This one I think I changed to inch and a half, which is now where I'm going to stay. Inch and a half all the way up. Um, I think it was, I think I started off at an inch and a half, then I went to inch and three quarters, and I'm back to inch and a half just because it seems to be working. Now that we're on the curve and we're curving up, inch and a half is fine. Now, what inch and a half is going to do. If you were to measure, after you cut that angle, if you were to measure from end to end, you're going to see it went from a 28-inch runner to a 28-and-a-half-inch runner. That's what that angle does. It, it makes it longer. So you do have to compensate a little bit when you're lying it up. Um, you just have to push in on the side to meet. In another video, we'll show you that.
All right, guys, so we just went through that little bit of fast-forward motion. We're getting ready to finish this up. I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys through the end of it. You know, same old, same old. Work your way all the way up, all the pies. I'm going to pop some staples in there, as usual. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better, better view of where I'm uh, putting them. Knife, good blade, end to end, right? There we go, we're going to tuck that in. Oh, scissors. You guys can't see that, but scissors on the end. Tuck that in a little bit. Now I've already angle cut that piece. I did that uh, before so that we could just go and flow into the next one. Now here's a pretty good uh, view of this uh, different angle. Now what's going to happen is keep watching because now we got to go from curved back to straight to finish off that riser. It's a little tricky. I think I was at 29 inches on the width by the time I got to the uh, to the end, and then I had to go from 29 back down to 28. I think it was with the binding on there. I think that runner actually ended up being 28 and a quarter. So we had to come down three quarters of an inch. It was not fun. Maybe you guys will get a chance to see that a little bit. It's hard because uh, I just use a little trick. I'll try to walk you guys through it if we uh, if we get it on video. Sorry, my head's in the way. Nothing you guys haven't seen before. Bend the uh, bend the end or the corners. Let's get some staples under there. I will probably cut some of it off there. I'm a stickler for that. I'm like, it's too difficult to work with. Too much excess carpet. You only really want it up maximum two inches. I will probably uh, staple on the far side of the smooth edge on this. Let's get some staples in there. I am famous for using a million staples. Pressure right in the middle, get it locked in. Now, lately, I haven't been putting smooth edge on when I do uh, stair runners because you don't need to. A lot of times, those pins will stick through and they, people complain about feeling them on their feet. But with this tough text, you have to. So, we're getting ready for the, uh, the grand finale. Get that cut up. Let's staple the sides. Now this carpet's pretty forgiving. It doesn't really show the staple marks, which is nice. This stuff lasts forever. Let's grab the riser. I think we probably went down to cut it. I should have cut this part out so you guys didn't have to see it. I think I wanted to show you guys me just trimming the end of the riser. Oh, me measuring. So there I'm measuring from end to end. I kind of wanted to see what it ended up at. And I was like, mm, it's about 28 and three quarters, 29. And I got to match this. So very hard to match. So what I do is I'll, I'll bend that up. You guys can't see that, but I'm twisting and bending that and pushing it in on a little bit of an angle, about a quarter inch, putting that staple in. Now, people don't really notice that. And then I just force force it down there. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little trick. I'm going to do the same on the other end, but I might wait till the riser gets in there because sometimes if you go and push one end a quarter inch and then the other end in a quarter inch, then all of a sudden you're, you're get, get yourself in trouble when you match up to the, to the next piece. See, so well, yeah, you probably leave that. Check the width. I think it was five and a half inches for the riser. It went up underneath the nose. Oh, look at that. Change right to the riser. Good for you. All right, let's get that fit in there. Now, 
the pattern's not lining up, you'll never line this pattern up. Don't try. So I've already stapled the other side in, pushed it in a quarter inch, and you can't really tell. People can't really tell. And then so on, but you can see how on the left hand side it's a little off. If you look at that, you can see those lines don't match up. So what I have to do is I have to push that in a little bit to match that up. You guys might be able to see, you might not, because my hand's probably gonna get in the way. Yeah, that's too bad. You guys are not gonna be able to see it. You'll see it when I move. So I'm banging it in with my tucker a little bit. I'll get you guys another vid where we do that and we'll get a good angle on it. But now you can see it's lined up. right because you're trying to make it look like it's continuous and that carpet is very difficult to uh, to manipulate there you go so here is the gimbal video I think that gimbal was all over the place look at it I don't want to be filming the ceramics but there you go you get a little bit of uh, a view and then there's a picture that goes with it to give you the idea of uh, where it goes from straight to curved I appreciate you watching subscribe I'm gonna put be putting more of this out um, if you guys are interested and then leave the comments in below and I will uh, I will get back to you if you want any certain videos and stuff like that I will make uh, more videos for you